nanobodies are the, is the um, smallest domain formed by the variable domain of heavy chain antibody antibodies found in, in, in camelids, in camels, in llamas, in, in this camelid in family. And these are the smallest fragment of natural antibodies with full antigen capacity. And they have shown to be an advantageous alternative with respect to conventional monoclonal antibodies. Like conventional antibodies, they show a high specificity and affinity for the targets and low toxicity. But as a result of their small size, they have the ability to recognize hidden epitopes in targets, and they have potential to access cavities within molecular targets, for example, with the active, uh, um, enzyme active sites or in receptor clefts. With this is very, very challenging with conventional antibodies. Moreover, they are encoded by single genes and efficiently produced in all prokaryotic and eukaryotic hosts, including bacteria and yeast. They show a high solubility and capacity to reform after the maturation while retaining the full binding ability. And they are more resistant to extremes of pH and temperature and attack by proteases than conventional antibodies. And their production products is scalable. It means that it can be, um, we can obtain multi kilograms amounts of these nanobodies in a relatively easy process. And this is very important for us, for chemists. Uh, the, the, the terminus, the carbon terminus, at the op is located at the opposite side of the antigen binding region, thus making it a optimal target for chemical functionalization, as we will see now. Um, we demonstrated the possibility of using these nanobodies as a biological recognition system for the construction of magnetoimmunosensors towards fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is a plasmatic glycoprotein of blood coagulation, which plays an important role in the diagnosis of and prognosis of inflammatory conditions, cardiovascular diseases, and cancer. And also, is a determinant of the metastatic potential of circulating tumor cells. And it has been uh, related or considered as a pronostic blood market for survival in patients suffering ovarian and gastric cancer. That is, is a molecule with a very high clinical interest. So what we did is for the first time to prepare a nanobody for the detection, uh, selective for the specific detection of fibrinogen, and we modified this uh, nanobody with cis tax, cis histidine tax at the carbon terminus, and we expressed the nanobody in E. coli because it can be expressed in in, in all in, in in many bacteria. So it's a relatively easy way to prepare these nanobodies. And we prepare magnetobiosensors. These magnetobiosensors are prepared by combining the mm, excellent characteristics already mentioned for screen printing disposable electrodes with the use of functionalized magnetic beads, as we will see right now. This allows, these magnetic beads have a large active surface area, which allows the immobilization of high loadings of several biomolecules on the surface of solid electrochemical transducer just upon applying of a magnetic field here down to the, to the electrochemical transducer. And it also provokes that many, many, many matrix effects will be removed. So this is... Uh, the immunosensors, two different immunosensors configuration we prepared and compared, uh, and compared. In the direct competitive immunoassay, the target fibrinogen and five, um, biotinylated fibrinogen in solution competed by the binding sites of nanobodies immobilized on histidine tag isolation magnetic beads. 
This is because we functionalize, they, we express the nanobody with uh, six histidine tags in order to be able to attach to these functionalized magnetic beads. While in the undirected competitive configuration, the target fibrinogen and the immobilized fibrinogen, in this case on carboxylated functionalized magnetic beads, competed for a fixed amount of biotinylated specific nanobody in solution. In both cases, the final leveling occurred through the uh, link, through linking uh, streptavidin peroxidase polymer on the biotinylated fibrinogen, the biotinylated fibrinogen. And the electrochemical transduction, so the, the magnetic beads bearing the immunoconjugates were magnetically captured here. You can see here the magnet located down and the, the, the electrosurface and the magnetic beads bearing the immunoconjugate were magnetically captured on the electrosurface, on the working electrosurface, and the analytical signal was obtained to monitor the affinity reaction by adding hydrogen peroxide and using hydroquinone as redox mediator. So the electrochemical transduction was amperometrically, in this case, at an, of, at an applied potential of minus 0.20 volts. These are the calibration curves and the analytical characteristics with both uh, competitive immunoassays. And although uh, both of the com both, uh, configuration could be useful for the determination of fibrinogen at the clinically relevant concentration, it can be highlighted that using indirect competitive uh, immunoassay, the sensitivity was much higher. And actually, the limit of detection was 68,000 times lower than the normal fibrinogen concentration in plasma. This allows that the um, sample can be diluted uh, quite a lot. And then we can remove the potential matrix effects. It's, it's just a dilution, and there is no matrix effects. And also, the relative standard deviation value in both cases showed that that's an, an quite good reproducibility was achieved in the preparation, in the fabrication of both, both immunosensors. And the magneto immunosensor was applied to the analysis of an international standard for fibrinogen plasma containing a certified concentration of 2.7 milligrams per milliliter. No matrix effect occurred because we dilute in a considerable manner both sample and then the quantification could be accomplished by simple interpolation of the amperometric signal obtained with the reconstituted sam plasma sample into the calibration curves constructed with standard solutions of fibrinogen. And you can see here the um, statistical, statistical comparison of the obtained result with the certified value, certified value showing that no significant differences occurred for a significant level of 95%, demonstrating the usefulness of the magneto immunosensor using nanobodies as a selective capture receptor. And as you can see here, the total assay time was 90 minutes, minutes once the modified magnetic beads were prepared. The next example I'm going to show you is also an immunosensor for fibrinogen. But in this case, the immunosensor is prepared using carbon nanohorns as scaffold for the construction of these disposable electrochemical immunosensor plasma platforms. Carbon nanohorns are single wall graphene sheets with tubular structure with a diameter between two and five nanometers and an average length of 40, 50 nanometers. And they have conical shaped teeth. This is very important for, for their usefulness in analytical application. Several thousand of these carbon nanohomes assemble to form quasi-spherical aggregate shape like a dahlia flower. These carbon nanohorns are prepared by laser ablation of pure graphite 
and in the absence, this is very important, in the absence of any metal catalyst. So we obtain this kind of uh, dahlia flower-like spherical structures that can be easily dispersed in water. And also, they can be used without a further metal purification removal because they are prepared without a metal catalyst. These are important advantages with respect to other nanocarbons and they have attracted a lot of attention for potential application. And furthermore, the structural defects in these uh, conical uh, structures are much larger than in, uh, in, in a straight-shaped carbon nanotubes, for example. And then they can be easily oxidized. They can be easily oxidized with many protocols, but in our case, we use a mild oxidation process with hydrogen peroxide solution at 100 degrees. And the objective was to open holes at the tip cone of the carbon nanohorse and generating carboxylated groups, which are further used for chemical modification. That is, we achieve in that case the functionalization of these end cones with carboxylated groups. And these carboxylated groups that are much larger than with other preparation methods can be used for the covalent attachment of biomolecules. That's, this is what we are going to do to prepare the immunosensor, to attach the biomolecules to these carboxylated ended carbon nanohorns. These are transmission electron microscopy images of carboxylated carbon nanohorns showing the already mentioned dahl dahlia-like uh, uh, spherical structures with a diameter of around 120 nanometers. And this is the same image from the carbon nanohorn deposited onto the screen printed carbon electrodes. And you can see that the spherical structure is maintained and the size is always is around 130 nanometers, which means that the electrosurfing deposition process did not affect the morphology of the pristine carbon nanohorns. This is, uh, these are the different steps involved in the immunosensor preparation. So after modification of a screen printed carbon electrode with the carboxylated carbon nanohorns, um, fibrinogen was covalently attached to this carboxylated carbon nanohorns using carbodimid chemistry. And we applied also an indirect competitive approach in order to shorten the whole process and to economize in mono regions, which is very important, as we told before, for, for real clinical applications. In this case, this competitive, indirect competitive immunosensor involves the preparation of a mixture solution of the target uh, fibrinogen and the uh, peroxidase label corresponding antibody, and we drop a mixture solution on the electro surface. We incubate it for 30 minutes, and the remaining HP, HRP label an antibody reacted with the immobilized uh, uh, fibrinogen on the electro surface, and then the immunoreaction will follow unprometrically up an addition of hydrogen peroxide and also using hydroquinone as electron mediator. These are atomic four microscopy images of pristine carbon nanohub, nanohorns, and also pristine uh, the, um, the conjugate between fibrinogen and carbon nanohorns. You can see here that uh, there is a highly dispersed uh, spherical structure, but upon immobilization of the biomolecule, the size was much larger, approximately 450 nanometers. So demonstrating that the biomolecules were attached on the carbon nanohorns. Mm -hmm.